Uh, okay, so welcome back, everybody. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to introduce uh, Bruno Klingler, who will give the second uh, the second mini mini course uh, this morning and tomorrow morning. Uh, Thanks a lot uh, for the invitation to speak here. So let me put the volume at the maximum so that you don't lose anything. All right. So uh, I want to talk about uh, Dame geometry, the sense of polynomial structures and uh, hash theory. So in fact. Uh, so, uh, Boris gave uh, a short introduction to uh, model theory and uh, minimal structures. Um, so, I will continue that today. And uh, the course, I mean, at least the abstract that I gave, in fact, covers also basically what Jacobs will talk about uh, tomorrow and the day after. So, uh, what is the plan, basically, is uh, I will talk again about uh, minimal structures. Uh, geometry in more details. Boris uh, was uh, talking about the general principle, but uh, we go into the details. Then uh, we talk about two principles for applying this to uh, algebraic geometry. And uh, in particular, uh, tomorrow we talk about uh, definability. So the first two items will be today, and tomorrow I will talk about definability of field maps. And depending on the time, I will talk about the uh, function application and functional reference in much theory. And then, uh, uh, so this is what I uh, will do uh, today and tomorrow, and uh, Jacob. Uh, told me that he would, and this is also in his abstract, they would talk about uh, definable Gaga, so which is uh, a further improvement uh, of uh, these applications to algebraic geometry. Um, and then he would talk about applications uh, uh, to Griffith's uh, conjecture. I think this is roughly the plan of what will happen in the next uh, few days as far as those videos are concerned. Okay, so let me start now. Um, so, um, team geometry deals with geometry over R. This is the sense of communal structures. And uh, what is the origin? So uh, Boris gave uh, an introduction to the history of uh, modern theory and this notion of tameness as it was developed. But from the point of view of algebraic geometry, uh, all this comes from a complaint uh, by Cotton Dick that uh, in the says that uh, analysis was invented by analysts for a problem from analysis, but not for describing geometric forms. And so he suggested that uh, topology should be, general topology should be replaced by a team, uh, topology or team geometry. And uh, this means that you want to get rid of uh, white phenomena, and the white phenomena are typically like Cantor sets or piano curves, but uh, also much more basic things. So you want to discard any white phenomenon. From, uh, from point of view of topology, so let me you give, give you a, a, a typical example. So what is uh, white thing? So do you see here? Uh, uh, can't go too uh, too high. Um, so what is a typical uh, uh, white phenomenon? Uh, so you consider the graph of the function that uh, you x associate a uh, sign of the x. For uh, x positive uh, real number. Okay. Then I claim that this guy uh, is not tame for at least three reasons. First, if you look at its closure, so this is its boundary uh, in gamma. And um, so if you think of this, so uh, the picture is a of me, of course, you have this zero, then you have this segment between, uh, this vertical segment between minus one and one. And then you have this very fast oscillating function, right? That accumulates there. Okay? And uh, the problem is that this closure typically is connected but not half connected. So 
this is point, and if you just want to do uh, uh, topology, but for geometry, this is kind of an embarrassment if you create the geometric forms are uh, things that have to be uh, uh, grown, and so in particular, uh, have to be art connected. So the second reason why this is uh, not tame is uh, basically that uh, you don't have a good boundary theory. Maybe any for any meaning that you can give to this boundary here, this has to be this. Uh, uh, this is this vertical segment, so the dimension uh, will be one. And but this is also the, the, the nature the notion of dimension for gamma itself. So the boundary has the same dimension as the space you are considering, and so this means in particular that you cannot have uh, any good stratification theory. So no stratification theory. And so from the point of view of the geometers, this is very bad. So such things should not appear uh, if you consider only a tame object. And the third reason why this is not tame, at least one third reason, is that if you take the intersection uh, with the real line, right, then uh, you see that, uh, of course, uh, this is uh, not a finite type. Here you get uh, an infinite set uh, accumulating. Although this is a dimension zero, uh, this is an infinite set. So this is not unique, infinitely many uh, informations to describe this set. So uh, this is bad. And uh, what you want to do with scale geometry is get rid of this kind of wild phenomenon. OK, so uh, let me now uh, try uh, to uh, describe what is an omnimodal structure. So we start with the notion of structure. So uh, Boris did not uh, give the axiomatic definition, and I will give a definition which is good for geometers, not for logician. So uh, the prototype of uh, tame geometry is semi-algebraic geometry, as already said by uh, Boris. And so I, I will not recall, or maybe I will know, so the prototype. The tame geometry. Uh, this is uh, semi algebraic geometry. So I just uh, remind you the definition. So SRN is semi algebraic. Means that if X is a union, finite union, of sets of the form. Uh, the following form x in Rn such that maybe you have uh, one polynomial equal to zero and other polynomials, finitely many polynomials uh, are positive. Okay, so, uh, where uh, f and you guys are pretty good. And then by it. Okay? So this is the standard definition. And then uh, the miracle is that uh, if you take uh, uh, um, a semi algebraic set, then its boundary is semi algebraic. So this first uh, thing, uh, the dimension is slightly smaller. And uh, it has finitely many uh, connected components. So this does not have happen. And so, in particular, uh, with all this, you get a very nice uh, stratification theory um, of uh, this kind of spaces. So, what is the problem with uh, semi algebraic geometry is that it's too close to algebraic geometry to be really useful. Uh, uh, your life, so you would like to have uh, uh, more general geometries having the same kind of same features. And this will be the dominion structures of uh, model theory. So let me uh, start by recalling what a structure is from the point of view of the geometer. So, what is a structure? Um, so, a structure. Expanding the real field R uh, is seen as an order field, is a collection uh, S uh, 
which is collection SN for all n uh, in uh, integer, so that uh, SN well, mm, SN is a subset is a set of subsets of R. So basically, a structure is just describing the collection of sets you are allowed to play with set of subsets of R n uh, for all n. And now you just put a few axioms on them. So what are the axioms? Uh, the first axioms are purely uh, set theoretic. Um, well, not, not, not the first one. So, so first you ask that algebraic sets are in SN. So at least you are allowed to play with all uh, real algebraic sets. Okay. So second is that you are allowed to uh, do uh, standard um, set theoretic uh, procedure. Uh, namely, you ask that this collection of subsets in R of Rn is a Boolean subalgebra. So this is the power set of Rn, and you ask that this is a Boolean. In other words, this, this guy SN, this collection of sets, has to be stable at the finite union, finite intersection, and complement. Uh, third is that it has to be stable on the product. So uh, if you have A in SP and B in SQ, uh, then uh, A times B is in SP plus Q. All right, so these are kind of uh, mild uh, uh, conditions. Uh, now, uh, the problem um, um, is uh, the fourth action. You ask that. You are stable under linear projection. So this P from R plus one to R n is a linear projection, and if uh, A belongs to S n plus one, then you ask that uh, P of A belongs to S n. So you see that this is a tricky axiom because as soon as you add one set in S n plus one, so a new subset of R n plus one. Then automatically all its linear projections have to be in Rn, and then the projection of the projections in Rn minus one, and so on. So uh, very rapidly because of this axiom, you are creating a lot of mess in dimension one by Cantor sets. Okay, uh, I will come uh, later to that, uh, but uh, this is the definition of a structure. Not yet uh, an only rule one, and uh, already with this you can play quite a bit. So I'm spending some time doing this because I think this is really what has to be uh, understood. All right, so uh, just a matter of terminology is that uh, the elements of uh, S n for all n uh, are called. Uh, the definable sets, the S definable sets, so the definable sets for the structures. And uh, now you have sets. So, this is a collection of sets you are allowed to play with. So, you need functions. And uh, well, what are the functions you are allowed to play with? These are the definable functions. So, what is a definable function? Well, uh, you say that the function from A to B is S definable with uh, A, B, and the graph. F are S defined. A and B right now are subset of Rn. Uh, you are in R, Rn times Rn, and uh, you take the graph and you ask that this is uh, definable in the previous sense in your structure. Okay, so a uh, typical example of a structure uh, is uh, Rh. So, so uh, uh, the definable sets are exactly uh, the semi-algebraic sets. You see that algebraic sets uh, do not form a structure because of this force axiom. If you project an algebraic set, you do not get something algebraic, but semi-algebraic. And so because of the axiom 1 and 4, uh, you see that in fact R is contained in any S. Any structure contains uh, expanding R contains the uh, R algebra. So in some sense, this is the minimal one. Um, okay, example two. Uh, what is important is that if, if S1 and S2 
uh, our structures, um, then as our intersection is also a structure, of course. So this means that uh, this is very important. If F is a collection of uh, sets of Rn and Dn, or a collection of function of functions, it makes sense uh, to define um, the smallest structure. Uh, containing uh, those subsets as definable sets or those functions as definable functions. Uh, because you take, you look at all the structure containing those subsets or, or, and those functions are definable uh, subsets or functions, and you take the intersection, and this will be the structure. So, this is called the structure generated uh, by F. Okay, so now you see that you are in a wide world, right? You can take whatever uh, sets you want to consider and you, you deduce a structure from that. But nevertheless, there are, there is, there is, uh, just a formal game uh, of these axioms uh, to prove the following things. A few basic facts. Which are easy to check. Just using the axioms is that um, suppose that uh, A is definable, so now I find it just be S definable for some structure S. Then this implies that the closure, uh, the interior, and uh, uh, the boundary are S definable. Okay. Uh, second is that. Uh, if you have f from a to b definable, then uh, f of a and f minus 1 of b are as definable. And of course, the last important property is that you can compose uh, definable functions. So if f from a to b is definable and g from b to c. Uh, are uh, definable, then uh, G composed with F is defined. Okay, so that's good. That's basic properties that uh, we wanted to have. Um, so, uh, what are we using uh, to do this? For example, if you want to prove that uh, A bar, the closure, is uh, definable, well, basically, we are just using the fact that the Euclidean norm is given by at least a square. Is given by a semi algebraic function. So let's, let's check this. So you write the usual uh, definition of your closure. So it is, it is a subset of Rn. So a closure will be a subset of points in Rn such that for all epsilon larger than, than zero, there exists uh, y in Rn such that the distance between x and y, uh, sorry, in A, such that. Uh, this is smaller than, let's say, epsilon squared, right? So you see that the usual definition uh, in terms of epsilon and, uh, uh, is you have quantifiers here. And the game, the name of the game is to eliminate quantifier using projections, linear projections. So if you try to do this, you will see that uh, this guy is Rn minus the projection from i plus 1 to Rn on the first n factors of Rn plus 1. Minus a projection. So I'm just writing this to explain next what we'll do with format. So uh, you see that this is a very simple uh, topological operation. It takes a closure, but in terms of writing uh, everything in terms of projections, this is quite complicated. So um, you can check that A bar is this thing where B is the set of uh, Rn cos uh, R cos A. So uh, intersecting. Is a set of x epsilon and y in Rn plus R plus Rn such that the sum of xi minus yi squared is smaller than epsilon squared. Okay? 
So uh, now, uh, as I was saying, so we are stable on the product, so this is definable. Um, um, this is definable because the Euclidean uh, square is a polynomial function. So uh, certainly uh, this is semi algebraic, so definable. And uh, now you take intersection, so this is still uh, definable. And now uh, you are subtracting, so you are in Boolean operation, you are definable, you project, and you subtract again. But you see that this is kind of awful, uh, so you can imagine that you don't want to have to prove. Uh, each time that uh, something can be defined in terms of projection. So it's much better to uh, use formulas and then we come back to uh, something closer to the definition that the boys gave. Right? So let me briefly indicate uh, that link. So uh, definition, so a first order formula yes. which, uh, is a formula sentence, you know, a formula uh, constructed uh, from uh, the following rules. That you are allowed to have. First, uh, if you fix a polynomial, the equation in variables, uh, then as a sentence, p of x1, xn is equal to zero, or p of x1, xn is positive, uh, is uh, first order. First order sentence. So it tells you at least that you have to start some uh, first order sentences. Uh, second is that if uh, A is a subset of uh, S, a definable subset, so if A is in Sn, then our sentence X in A is first order. Okay, and so now what are the co uh, corresponding to uh, uh, the Boolean uh, condition? If you have two sentences, Java the starter. Our first order. And uh, you want to say is that phi uh, psi, phi uh, r psi, uh, non phi, and phi. Uh, implies psi are also first order formulas. And a uh, force is that um, if phi of yx is a first order formula, and uh, so y is supposed to be in Rt, x in Rn, and if uh, A is in Sn, then uh, the sentence there exists an uh, X in A uh, yes, there is an X in A such that um, uh, phi uh, of Y X or uh, for all X in A Phi of y and x. This is uh, still a uh, first order formula. Okay. So this is a rough uh, definition uh, of uh, what is the first order formula uh, related to a structure. And then uh, the nice statement that will enable you to recognize uh, definable sets is just the following. Uh, lemma, which is easy to show, is that uh, if uh, you take a first order formula, if a first uh, order formula uh, for S, in the language of S, then the 
terms can be set in Rn, the correction of x1, xn in Rn, satisfying this formula. Uh, it is as definable. Right. So, uh, in this way, uh, we have transformed uh, uh, the fact of trying to describe a set uh, using this, those awful linear projections by uh, just writing using a uh, first order uh, formulas. And uh, you can recognize that the definition. Uh, of uh, the closure of A is exactly a sentence in this uh, first order formula because the Euclidean distance is similar to one. Okay, so uh, now uh, this is it for structures. So, what about uh, uh, omnium structures? Um, so uh, a structure, so we start with a structure now, so the structure of sets, which are the definable sets, a structure S is no minimal. Uh, moreover, it satisfies the fifth axioms, and uh, what is the axioms, which axioms, which is uh, any definable uh, set is any definable subset dimension one, between so S1, uh, is semi-algebraic. In other words, uh, a finite union of points and intervals. Okay. So let me check this time. Okay. All right, so uh, this is a notion of minimal structure, and uh, so uh, let's give some examples and non examples. Uh, well, right now we'll just give one example, and this is my edge, is only new. Okay, so that's fine, uh, by, the, by definition, but uh, also uh, uh, a remark of the definition is something surprising is that. We we'll use only your structures to study some different type problem, and this is kind of strange if you think about it because if you take C inside R, then by definition this is not definable. Any minimal structure. Okay? And in the same way, uh, periodic functions uh, uh, are not, are never. Uh, are not findable in any of the structure. So, for instance, uh, if you take the structure generated by the function sine, uh, well, uh, this, this is not uh, a minimum. So uh, I will give you later more interesting examples of omnium structures, but uh, what I want to insist first is about uh, what are really the thing properties uh, of omnium structure. So I will fix an omnium structure. And uh, now to find it will mean uh, S. So the first theorem in this business, so all this is in the book uh, by Hunter Dries about uh, team geometry, and it's quite a nice book. So uh, theorem one, which is called non chronicity uh, describes the uh, uh, definable functions. So if you start from uh, in dimension one, so if you start from an open term A, B, and R, and you just look at the definable function R. So uh, in fact, it's easy to describe them. It means that there exists a sequence a is equal to a zero, if it's smaller than a one, if it's smaller than a two, and so on. A finite sequence uh, to a is equal to b, such that uh, f restricted to a i, a i plus one, is continuous and uh, strictly continuous. So these functions are kind of nice, they are just uh, what is the simplest kind of function you can imagine. 
So uh, let me make a remark here is that you could replace continuous by CP for any finite P. But it's not always the case that you can assume that F is smooth. So there exists no minimal structure where this is not the case. Although the ones that we use, uh, in fact, uh, they meet uh, all the findings that are smooth. Uh, theorem 2 about those properties, and this is the main result, in fact. Uh, is what is called uh, the decomposition, but it's not in the sense of what you need. So, decomposition. And uh, it says the following suppose that your finite many uh, A1 AK definable subsets of Rn. Then, in fact, what you can construct is a global uh, uh, decomposition of Rn. So, there exists. Uh, what is called a cylindrical uh, definable cellular decomposition. Of Rn. So this is the nicest possible decomposition of Rn into cells. I will come back to that. Uh, such that uh, Ai, each Ai is a finite union of cells. So now, I have to, 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 for you to understand what is uh, the meaning of the theorem, uh, I have to describe what are those uh, cellular decompositions. So in n is equal to 1, uh, well, the CBCD of R is just as before. This is just a collection uh, A1 smaller than A2, blah blah smaller than AN, or AL. And what are the cells of this decomposition? Well, they are the ones that you can uh, guess. Either the points, AI, or uh, the interval AI, AI plus one. Well, now, uh, of course, so uh, let me make a picture here. You have the finite points, and then the cells uh, are uh, either the points or the, uh, the interval, possibly the infinite one, right? So these are your cells. Now, what I'm saying is that whatever the collection of different subsets of Rn, there is such a decomposition. This is trivial because this is the fifth axiom. But what is not trivial is what happened in higher dimension. Uh, what is the CDCD of uh, Rn? Let's say that uh, this is constructed by induction. So this is the CDCD of Rn minus 1. And plus, for each cell of C uh, in uh, Rn minus 1, uh, a picture of the following form. Uh, so you have your uh, cell C, and over here in, in Rn, um, you have uh, you give yourself a finite collection of functions that you can suppose to be monotonous um, if you want, but I didn't do it here. And so, uh, what are the cells? Uh, the cells so F C I plus one, but the collection is finite. So F C I plus one is larger than F C I, and then the cells are just the bands and the graphs of this function. So this is why this is called cylindrical cellular decomposition. And the claim is that in R2, a definable subset of R2 in any original structure can be obtained exactly in that way. You project to R, you get the CDCD of R, so this finite union of points and interval, and over this, you have bands and graphs. Okay? So uh, the importance of this, uh, why was I saying that this is the main result? Well, because uh, it enables you to. Uh, And it goes you to uh, prove uh, the following that if A is definable in our end, then of course uh, the number of collective components is finite. That is, you uh, write your partition, you have only finitely many cells, and so of course uh, you have to be uh, uh, to have only finitely many collective components. And any component of A is finite. Because it would be a, a finite union of sets. All right, and uh, now we can uh, define the dimension if you want as being uh, a dimension, uh, the dimension, the sup of the dimension of the cell that here. You have to prove that this is independent of such a CDC decomposition, and then you get that uh, this is strictly smaller than the dimension of A, because you consider only cells of smaller dimension. 
All right. So uh, maybe I don't want to. Yeah, I'm not really very late. So uh, there are uh, two other nice uh, corollaries of this decomposition theorem. One is a stratification theorem that tells you that uh, basically, if you start with any definable set, then you can find a nice stratification where the strata are very CP manifolds, which are definable and which are in fact graph manifolds. So, this is a nice uh, stratification you can get. And a corollary of this uh, result of stratification is that if you take A in R and definable and of dimension K and bound it, then uh, the k volume, k in the volume of a uh, is finite. Okay. Um, this is an important uh, corollary, as we will see in, uh, in the rest of the lecture. Um, what else? Ah, there is a trivialization theorem. If you have a family, uh, if you have a map f from uh, x to y, which is continuous and definable, then there exists a, a, a partition of the base into uh, disjoint pieces, which are still definable subsets, into finitely many pieces, such that on each piece uh, you trivialize. So uh, your, your family is just a product of that stratum, of that cell, with uh, a fixed uh, definable set. And so uh, the corollary uh, of this is that if you take uh, A in Rn of Rn, Definable, then uh, the family, now you look at it as being a family uh, of uh, uh, Rn, so family AT for T in Rn uh, takes only finitely many homeomorphism type. Uh, finitely many homeomorphism type. So this is in the spirit of the uniform validness that uh, Boris uh, mentioned. All right. So uh, now that I uh, explain, uh, and all this is just essentially formal on the basic properties, you know, maybe just uh, elementary topology. So this is quite nice, but of course this is useless if you don't have examples. And I mean more general examples than semi-algebraic sets. So, uh, what are uh, non trivial minimal structures? Uh, so, uh, the main question, let me put it this way. The uh, main problem is uh, you start, let's start with a collection of functions. Given f, the collection. You can do it purely with sets, but uh, maybe it's easier with function. The collection f uh, of functions from, uh, let's say, uh, Rp or Rn to R, n is allowed to vary. Uh, how do we prove that the structure generated the Rf, generated by this collection of functions, uh, is only and uh, well, there is a quite nice criteria which is easier uh, to check than uh, the properties of the definition. So you will see, so uh, Boyce introduced the notion of a, a complete uh, structure. So a structure S is not a complete. Yeah, if uh, of uh, the definable set, uh, you don't need the operation of the two premise. So this is the first definition, and second, uh, the criterion that I will give will be only about testing a certain subset. So an F set, so a set related to this collection of functions, is a just a set of the following form. You take the collection of X in uh, Rn, 
such that uh, there is uh, uh, some polynomial in X, and in some functions of X, Uh, in your collection, uh, which is equal to zero. Okay. So where uh, t is a polynomial, is ten and, and f, f. Okay. So these are the simplest uh, definable sets that appear in your structure. Okay, then the nice uh, lemma is the following. So the proposition is that, and this is not really hard to prove, that if F satisfies uh, two properties, first, uh, that uh, RF is not complete. And second, uh, that every F set has only finite many connected components. Then uh, RF is omega. And this criterion is very efficient to uh, prove that the structure is only more. So, uh, Boyce already introduced R and. So, uh, this is a structure generated by a restricted analytic function. Right, so what are uh, those functions? They are functions from the box minus 1, 1 to the end. To uh, R, which are field analytic, meaning that it extends a bit around an open neighborhood of minus one one, on which it is real analytic. Then, uh, what are the definable sets here? These are the globally subanalytic sets. So what does it mean? Well, uh, you can uh, replace polynomials by a real-analytic function, and uh, you, if you replace semi-algebraic, you get the notion of semi-analytic set. So the problem is that it does not behave well under projections. So uh, sub-analytic would be uh, the projection uh, of bounded uh, sub uh, semi uh, semi-analytic sets. So this is the definition of sub-analytic, and now globally sub-analytic means that you Moreover, put a condition at infinity. So these are the sum analytic sets, not in Rn, but in T and R. Okay. And the proof here uh, that uh, this is minimal, well, basically, as the boy said, this is Gabriel of theorem that tells you that this structure is not complete. That tells you that the complement of uh, sub analytic is automatically uh, sub analytic. There is a difference of two sub analytics is sub analytic. Okay. So this is uh, our second structure. So a third structure already also mentioned by uh, Boris is uh, Rx. So you just look at the structure generated by the real exponential function, but now you are taking the full graph, you are not restricted to a compact set. So this is due to uh, Alex Menke. And uh, now, uh, what is the point? Well, uh, so what are the sets we consider here? Well, the exponential sets. So this is a of points that perform x in Rn such that we have a in x. In x1, xn, and then in exponential x1, exponential xn, and uh, which is equal to zero. So this is what is called an exponential set. And a sub exponential set it, it, it is a projection 
of an incremental set by a linear projection to Rn. Okay. All right, so uh, basically, uh, the deep result of Wilpi is that the uh, complement of sub exponential is sub exponential. And then um, it was uh, previously done that Hovansky. I never know how to write correctly these names. So uh, is that an exponential set? This is already surprising and not real theorem, right? Uh, if you take an exponential set, then it has only finitely many uh, connected components. So pi zero of exponential set is finite. And so uh, if you put those two facts together, basically you prove that the structure is homonymous. So, uh, to prove this result, uh, Winky used a deep model theory as uh, underlined by Boris. But in fact, nowadays, uh, there is a simpler proof uh, due to uh, Lyon and Rona, uh, which is uh, completely geometric in the sense that uh, there are some kind of preparation theorem for uh, subanetic functions, like Bayer Strass preparation theorem, but for subanetic functions where you can deduce uh, these results. So, uh, if you think, what, are the fun what, is, what is your gain compared to Rn? Well, typically we have functions of the form x alpha or exponential um, uh, minus one over x or x positive and alpha irrational. So there are functions in our x, but there are not in our n. Right? Uh, you should think that this is really a good motivation. This function is perfect in some sense. Exponential minus one over x, when you study it in analysis, it does all the good properties you want. It's decreasing very fast. But uh, it's far from uh, being algebraic, of course. Okay, so uh, the fourth example is basically the possibility of putting together two and three, and so this is R and X, and this is the main structure of the use, and this is due to uh, Miller and Van der Waals. And again, uh, they use uh, model theory, but uh, you can just use. Uh, you and Roland again have a preparation theorem for uh, log exponential functions that give you the result. All right, so it was a short course uh, in uh, uh, geometry nine. So now we want to globalize things. So how do we uh, globalize things? So uh, globalization. Well, uh, this is very easy. This is the usual definition that we have for uh, many tools. Namely, uh, so uh, an S, so you fix your own your structure S, and then the next topological space is, uh, or many tools, maybe, is what? Well, is the topological space uh, M, and dot with the finite. So finiteness is extremely important, you want to keep it. So a finite atlas of uh, charts such that the change of coordinates. So such that I don't want to write everything, such that the image in Rn of your uh, of each of your map in your atlas is definable. The intersection two by two are definable in S, of course, and the change of coordinates are definable. So let's just let me just say that the change. Coordinates are defined. So the usual notion. Where to, uh, of course, this finite test. Um, so, a typical example, and this is where I now we join uh, algebraic geometry, is that you take x over r and algebraic variety, defined by the zero. Then the set of real points is uh, with Euclidean topology and carries a uh, canonical R-H structure. Right, so this is canonically an R-H uh, manifold. 
Why? Because, uh, well, you cover uh, X by finite limit of fines. So those are fines uh, clearly give you uh, definable subsets of Rn when you take X of R. And uh, then the change of coordinates are algebraic. So uh, this is fine. And uh, then you have to check that this is independent of the finitely many uh, affine uh, open that you have chosen. And this is an easy exercise. And then, uh, in the same way, if x now is defined of a c and the smart x algebraic, uh, then uh, x of c it is r. You should have given a name to that. Uh, you get the category, the category of s uh, top topological space endowed with an s definable structure. And so you get an object here. Either, uh, for instance, using a restriction of, of scalars. So we're using the restriction of scalars. You realize it as being y of uh, r for y is the restriction of scalar of x from uh, c to r. And uh, so this is nice and completely canonical. Uh, so uh, we see that we have a uh, diagram. Uh, my client here to C goes to uh, in fact to S star so topological uh, space defined with a definable uh, S definable structure goes to the top. So here this is just the usual uh, topization factor, it takes a sequence with the induced topology, and here you can factorize this uh, to uh, the same factor here. And here you can call this uh, the definable uh, space associated to your algebra in C. And uh, what will happen tomorrow is that right now uh, we are just doing a basic geometry. Uh, we are not very precise about sheaves of functions. So tomorrow, uh, one of the main tasks of uh, Jacob will be to uh, enrich the picture to describe you uh, what are the uh, definable uh, complex analytic functions. Okay, so we will do that uh, uh, tomorrow for sure. Uh, another example that is important is with quotients uh, in uh, this category. So suppose you have x space with an s definable structure, and suppose you have an equivalence relation, which is a closed equivalence, closed and definable. So you would like to uh, define x. Uh, x mod r uh, as an object in your uh, category. And uh, well, you have to put some conditions on the equivalence relations for this to be true. So there are two basic facts. The first one is the theorem due to Wolfian uh, and uh, Van der Waals that says that if r is uh, definable, definitely proper. So you suppose that this is definable, so it says by zero property and closed, but it's definitely proper. Um, then the geometric quotient x mod r, so really the set of uh, uh, equivalence classes, uh, geometric quotient, exists uh, in. Um, So what does uh, definable proper means? Well, this means that this is a proper map in the sense of uh, your definable structure. So the playmate of a compact definable subset uh, of one of the projection uh, uh, is is uh, is definable. This means that pi i is one or two, and in fact one is enough from R to X uh, is. Uh, this means you take a compact subset of X, which is also definable, then the play has to be compact. So, uh, for instance, uh, application um, take M a compact R group, R algebraic group, and make it X uh, semi algebraically. 
Arms down step. X, which is semi algebra. Then, because M is compact, uh, the, the equivalent installation uh, defined by uh, the quotient of caution uh, will be defined by proper, and then uh, X M uh, is uh, belongs to R. So this guy admits a finite atlas of charts with value in R M and change of coordinates, which are a semi-algebraic function. And this is completely canonical. So this is one theorem that is useful. And there is a second one, which is more difficult, that says that if R is an anti equivalent solution, so meaning that P1 or P2 is etal, then X not R so sorry, uh, this one is not more delicate, this is uh, still very easy. Um, it just means that you cover X by finitely many uh, definable sets, and then you take as a quotient of those define, finitely many definable sets by the meta relation, and this clearly we define what you want. But uh, what is the application of this? The application of the following. Suppose that you have an infinite abstract group, gamma. Uh, acting properly discontinuously on some x, which is defined, right? And now you make an assumption. Suppose the action of gamma on x emits a definable open. So I will just remind you what it means. This means that gamma applied to uh, f generates a full space is equal to x. And uh, second, uh, that uh, the stabilizer of uh, uh, another stabilizer of the set of gamma and gamma so that gamma f is equal to f is not is fine. This is a notion of proper discontinuous action. Then as a claim. Is that the quotient x what gamma uh, as um, well? I will. So the structure will depend on that choice. X what gamma f uh, is messed up. So this means that with the choice of such a fundamental set, you can associate the definable structure of the quotient, and this definable structure will depend. Well, so what is the idea? So what is the proof? The proof is that uh, you have your relation for compaction is just rooted at all, all elements of the form uh, x gamma x where x and x and gamma is in gamma. Right? So this is your subset, uh, your subset uh, in x cross x. But this is not so you cannot think uh, it's usually not definable if gamma is infinite. And this is the assumption that I've made here. Uh, and X face uh, uh, This is not definable because uh, the fibers of the projection are infinite and zero dimensional, so this is not a definable set. But you can restrict it to the uh, 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 so X plus uh, your relation, and you can restrict it to uh, F modulo the relation induced on F by R. And now F is definable, and the restriction of R to F. Because of that condition, becomes uh, definable. Okay. So this gives you uh, the structure you are looking for. Mm, well, uh, I'm a bit late. Oops. Uh, well, it seems that I can't do better than uh, wait for tomorrow to continue. So, okay. Sorry for that. I was planning to do much more. Uh, Today, but I guess uh, time is over, right? Is that correct, Carlos? Uh, I don't know who's speaking. I'm, I'm to plus or minus a minute or something. <laughs> uh, so it's better to stop here, and then tomorrow I will start by explaining how we can apply uh, these uh, ominous structures to a complex uh, geometry, and then after that I will spend most of the lecture on application to variation of structures. Okay, so I stop here. Okay, so let's thank uh, Bruno for the course. Bye.
that everybody should feel free to unmute yourself, uh, turn on your video. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, uh, are there any questions? I had. I would have two questions, if I may. Oh, great. So. Um, yeah. Okay, so the, the first one is kind of stupid, but this definably proper, is this actually the same as just proper and definable, or am I misunderstanding something? Uh, if you were, well, the point is that over R, this is the same thing, but uh, you could generalize the notion of uh, any real closed field, and then there is an intrinsic notion of definably proper without using the ambient compactness in your field. Ah, okay. Okay. So okay. Over R is the same. Okay. Uh, and then the, the second question I've been wondering, I mean, I've been going to a couple of these talks, so I've been wondering about this question, like, so, you know, suppose I take an, an O minimal structure and now I add in the integers, right? So I somehow force myself to also have the integers in the story. Yeah. Uh, so obviously it's not going to be O minimal anymore because now you have the integers, but how bad does it get? I mean, can you, can you still pretty much get arbitrarily bad once you throw in the integers or is it still sort of? I think you get something arbitrarily bad. Are there some examples in the literature that you're aware of? Like, no, I'm not aware of any kind of examples. Maybe Jacob and some of uh, I was going to say maybe, maybe Boris knows, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, Van den Dries, uh, Van den Dries <laughs> proved that uh, once, you, uh, once you have integers uh, on, on the real line, then... Um, you have uh, uh, all this, uh, what's called projective hierarchy, this uh, projective analytic hierarchy, um, you know, that you start with uh, uh, Borel sets and then uh, go uh, and worse and worse and worse. So it is, um, it is something very unimaginable. Uh, un uh, ah, okay, so, so then you basically get into the sort of measure, the, the sort of parad paradoxical stuff that you yeah yeah, yeah it, is, uh, it is it goes out of hand but mm, uh, but okay. generally your your question is very much uh, you know if you look at um, uh, if you think about this uh, uh, table that uh, this online uh, that i uh, i showed at uh, at the end so this uh, classification table mm -hmm. there are many boxes in it and this would be in the uh, fuerces boxes uh, the the the, the it, it is wor uh, worse, uh, uh, hard to imagine. <laughs> I see. Okay. Here's a question. That I, I mean, I have, a, I have a question, for example. Uh, what do we know about the topology? So you say that there's only finitely many connected components, but can you say something like the fundamental group is finitely generated or something like that also? Mm. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Uh, like, does it have the top? Does it have the homotopy type? I, I, I think this is true. Um, also, I never uh, saw the statement, so I, could, I would have to think of it to get a proof, but I think this is correct. I mean, I think it's homotopy type is a finite CW complex. Uh, automatically, the homotopy type will be a finite CW complex, so. Oh, okay, okay, okay. In particular, yeah. yeah. Any other questions? I, I have a couple more, but uh, maybe somebody else would like to go. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go with my next one. Uh, what happened? Uh, uh, is it possible to add some kind of, have some kind of functions that are not analytic functions involved? Um, yes. So, uh, although this is also not maybe so easy. So you see, I mean, people have played a lot, right, uh, studying various uh, minimal structures, and uh, um, basically, this is what I said. And when I said that there are structures, minimal structures, where uh, even definable functions uh, uh, are, cannot be uh, smoothed by pieces. Uh -uh. So uh, this will not happen with the big ones that we have at our next, and it will not happen if you take fashion closures that I did not introduce, but which are also big ones. But I think you can find a smaller or minimal structures where you don't have this property in the sense that really you are far from the smooth one. Mm -hmm. Although this always looks strange to me, I have to admit, but uh, it does exist. 
Okay, one last, maybe more general question. Uh, could you comment on, I mean, to what extent does this kind of satisfy, you know, Growth and Deacon pursuing stacks and other places famously said there should be some kind of theory of tame topology. To what extent does, the, does this uh, theory sort of satisfy that or even, satisfy even intersect with it? Maybe? Any requirements of Gothenburg, uh, Gothenburg problem. Um, what is not completely clear to me is uh, the arithmetic aspects. So, okay, I mean, in, in posturing stacks, uh, Gothenburg is not very uh, formal, right? So no. he says that there, there are a lot of desire, desirable properties and uh, I think many of them are satisfied by these kind of structures, but up to now, all the arithmetic aspects have not been uh, really uh, used, I would say. Uh -uh. But so is that you can work about any real close field, right? Not only R, and, uh, but uh, what Grotendieck had in mind was working with Cuba intersected with R. Uh -huh. If I may, uh, uh, at the, um, sure. a little bit. Uh, so um, uh, it's um, maybe interesting that um, in um, in the context of uh, uh, periodic analysis, uh, so people um, uh, did uh, similar um, approved similar theorems, uh, uh, and um, and the, uh, uh, the topology that uh, is similar to well, I mean. The, the structure of definable sets there is, uh, is actually more or less the same as um, uh, Grothendieck topology that, uh, 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 you know, how this is called, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, affinoid sets, uh, the cheese with, uh, uh, with holes in it, uh, uh, something that, so it is um, uh, in, in, in that case, uh, it is uh, almost word for word um, uh, the uh, definition of Grothendieck topology that um, uh, that uh, appears uh, in, in that context, and, uh, and 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 so it is in spirit. It is very close uh, in general. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions or discussion or comments or anything like that? Okay, so I guess uh, I, I think so. We'll, uh, that'll be the, the end of this morning session. Uh, thank you to, to Boris and to Bruno for some very nice talks.